Hello, welcome to the Chem School. Today, the topic that we have decided is the type of structural representation of organic compounds. Organic compounds can be represented broadly into five types, which are as follows: the Lewis or dot structure, complete or dashed structure, condensed structure, bond line structure, and the last one is three-dimensional structure known as 3D structure. Before we start elaborating this, we need to remember some key points. So let's talk about them. The first thing, just remember the type of bond formed by this element because they form major organic compounds that we are going to deal with. So just remember 4, 3, 2, 1. Four bonds are formed by carbon, three by nitrogen, two by oxygen, one by hydrogen and halogen. In halogens, you will have fluorine, chlorine, bromine and iodine. Carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen and halogen. Amongst these five types, the second, third and fourth is more important and therefore we will deal with them first and at last we will talk about the Lewis structure and the three dimensional structures. Now, let's talk about complete condensed and bond line structure with the help of example. The example that we have taken is ethane. So in ethane we have two carbons. Wherever you talk about the complete structure, first write down the carbon. We know that carbon shows catenation, so connect it. The rest bonds will be completed by hydrogen. So each carbon should have four bonds. So this has one bond. So the second one, the third one and the fourth one. Check this carbon has four bonds. So it has completed its valency. Similarly, complete for the second hydrogen. Similarly, complete for the second carbon. So you can see that the second carbon also has four bonds. So now this structure is completed. From this, we will try to draw the condensed structure. In condensed structure, we will start in a similar way. That is, we will draw two carbon and connect them each other. Then, at the end, count the total number of hydrogen and attach to that respective carbon. So, this carbon will have one, two and three hydrogen. Similarly, this carbon will have one, two and three hydrogen. So, what is the major difference in this? We have shown each and every hydrogen with respect to bonds, but here we have written all the hydrogen together attached to that particular carbon. In bond line, what we are going to do is, it is even more simpler. In bond line, we do not write down the carbon, we do not write down the hydrogen. Remember, if the hydrogen is attached to other atoms, that is hetero atoms, atoms apart from carbon, we will write down those hydrogens. That is, if the hydrogen is attached to oxygen, nitrogen or any other atom, then we will show that hydrogen. So I repeat, for bond line, we will not write down the carbon, we will not write down the hydrogen. We will only write down the hydrogen which is attached to the hetero atoms like oxygen and nitrogen or others. So let's see. So how many carbons do we have? Two. So you just draw a line and check how many ends this line have. So this is the first end and this is the second end. So it is assumed that the number of ends is equal to the number of carbon and the valency will be satisfied with the total number of hydrogen which is required. So ethane can be drawn in just a simple form that is a line form in case of bond line. Let's take the second example that is N-butanol. Now your N stands for simple. Just remember whenever we attach N, the functional group OH will go to the first or the last carbon. It will always be in the corner. So as of now, remember whenever I attach N, the functional group will be attached to the first or the last carbon. So here we have four carbon. This is the formula for butanol. So we have four carbon, draw four carbon first attached to each other by a single bond. Then attach the functional group that is you have OH to the first carbon or the last carbon at the corners. So here you will take O, it is OH. So O and then H. Remember here oxygen already has two bonds. So we will not talk about it henceforth. Next, let's talk about the other hydrogen. This carbon has one bond. So start attaching the hydrogens to those carbon. So this will have one, two, three, and fourth bond. Similarly, attach 
hydrogens to other so that each carbon has four bonds. Check each carbon has four bond, oxygen has two bond and each hydrogen has one bond. So, this is going to be the structure for n-butanol and this is your complete structure. Let us talk about condensed. In condensed what you will do is write down all the hydrogens together in the carbon. So, let us see. So, for the first carbon you have three hydrogens. So, it is C H 3. The second carbon has two hydrogen C H 2. The third carbon has two hydrogen C H 2. This one has two hydrogen first and then it has OH attached to it. So, this is going to be your condensed structure. Now, let us talk about the bond line. Now, Remember. whenever you have more than two carbons in bond line start writing down a zigzag pattern. Now, there is a reason because the organic compounds are three dimensional. Not all organic compounds are three dimensional, but most of them are three dimensional. So, let us start. So, in this case you have four carbons. So, 1, 2, 3 and 4. I repeat, just put the dot if you are confused. So, 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, 4 carbon is already done. Let us see. To the fourth carbon, you have one OH attached. So, just put that OH and this is your N butanol. Now, let us take the third example that is aniline. Of course, you have to practice more so that you get used to all these types of structures. So, aniline is actually an aromatic compound like benzene. So, it has six carbon. So, draw the six carbon in benzene pattern. So, you have one, two, 3, 4, 5 and 6 carbon. Connect each carbon. You know that in benzene you have alternate double bond and single bond. So, put alternate double bond and single bond. So, this is double bond, single bond, double bond, single bond and double bond. After this, check at the end I have written NH2. To any carbon you can attach this NH2. So, let us take nitrogen here. Nitrogen you can see very clearly has two hydrogen. So, put two hydrogen to this nitrogen. See, nitrogen is forming three bonds. Carbon at all places, now check, this carbon has one, two, three, four bonds. So, no more hydrogen to this carbon. This carbon has one, two and three bonds. So, you will attach one hydrogen to this carbon. This carbon has one, two, three bonds. So, one more hydrogen to this. Similarly, keep on attaching one more hydrogen to other carbon apart from the carbon where NH2 is attached. So, this is the structure of aniline and it is your complete structure for condensed. What you can do? Again, first form the basic skeleton that is you have carbon at the corners of the hexagon, then alternate double bond and single bond double bond, single bond, double bond, single bond and double bond. Then check. At this carbon you have N with two hydrogen. Just write it together. So, this carbon will have NH2. Rest all other carbon has one hydrogen. So, just write those hydrogen at the ends. Now, remember in exam, the condensed structure for aniline can also be given in one more form. That is, in spite of writing this double bond and single bond for options in your MCQs, you can also get a circle in between. So, whenever you get a circle in between, remember that this compound is aromatic. If it is a benzene-like structure, you can have a circle which represents double bond and single bond in an alternate pattern. The last one is bond line. For bond line, we will not show the carbon. So, we will just draw a hexagon. So, this is our hexagon. It is understood that the corner of the hexagon is your carbon. Remember, I said you that you will not show hydrogen of the carbons. But you have to show the hydrogen of the hetero atom. So, hetero atom here is nitrogen and it has two hydrogen. So, we have to show the hydrogen of the hetero atom. So, at this place you will write down NH2. 
then in the center you have a choice you can put a circle or you can put alternate double bond single bond double bond single bond and double bond so this is the bond line for your aniline i will give you some more questions to practice and the solution for that i'll be giving you in the next class from the five types of structural representation we have already done three so let's talk about the fourth one that is the lewis structure i have changed the order as per the importance so let's talk about the fourth one that is the lewis structure which is also called as the dot structure in this the first example i have taken as methane so in methane you have ch4 the formula for methane is ch4 so let's talk about the carbon now what we do basically in lewis structure in carbon it has four electrons in the valence shell so we will just show those four electrons so 1 2 3 and 4 so what we are doing is the bond that is formed it has two electron each bond will have two electrons so we are trying to represent those two electrons in lewis structure so this carbon has one electron here it will share this electron with hydrogen so when it share this electrons with hydrogen two electron is there so one bond will be formed here similarly how many hydrogen do we have four so let's start sharing those electrons so one and two so one more bond will be formed here similarly four bonds will be formed across carbon now why this is happening see remember that carbon requires eight electrons in the outermost shell so after sharing electron we know that when electron gets shared the bond formed is covalent bond so in this case after sharing electron see each carbon now you can see that this carbon has eight electrons in its vicinity so it has completed its octets i repeat the carbon has completed its octet and therefore the carbon is stable similarly let's talk about this hydrogen we know that hydrogen requires two electrons to become stable that is to achieve its duplet so this hydrogen after sharing will have this two electrons similarly the other hydrogens will have two electrons and in this case they have completed their duplet so lewis structure basically represents how the electron cloud is present around each and every atom we will take the second example for propane so in this case you will have three carbon so write down three carbon first 1 2 एंड थ्री अब तीनों कार्बन के बाजू में कार्बन है इसलिए हर एक कार्बन के बाजू में अपने पास क्या रहेगा फोर इलेक्ट्रॉन्स तो लेट स्टार्ट शोइंग दोज फोर इलेक्ट्रॉन्स सो दिस कार्बन विल हैव वन टू थ्री एंड फोर्थ इलेक्ट्रॉन ना बिटवीन दिस टू कार्बन अ बॉन्ड विल बी फॉर्म सो बिटवीन दिस टू कार्बन यू विल हैव वन मोर इलेक्ट्रॉन सो इस कार्बन का एक इलेक्ट्रॉन यहाँ पे आ गया सो दिस कार्बन हैज ऑलरेडी फॉर्म द बॉन्ड so this carbon has this electron 1 2 3 and 4 similarly for this 1 2 3 and 4 now wherever you see one electron which is a free electron start adding hydrogen there so this is a free electron add one hydrogen here and similarly keep on adding hydrogen wherever you see a free electron check each carbon now will have eight electrons in its vicinity 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 similarly for this you can count 2 to 4 to 6 and to 8 similarly for the last one 2 to 4 to 6 and to 8 so every carbon has completed its octet similarly every hydrogen has completed its duplet if you want to draw the circle you can if you want to skip it you can skip it now what have you observed why we do not use lewis structure so much in organic chemistry because you can see methane was a small molecule but in this case the structure has become so big now can you imagine for 10 and 15 carbon you will start drawing in the similar pattern that is the dot structure no that is why in organic chemistry we avoid using lewis structure because it becomes very very lengthy so stick to the complete structure condensed structure or bond line structure because they are more easy to represent now let's talk about the last structural representation that is 3d representation and we are talking about the 3d representation of methane as i said you earlier most of the organic compounds are three dimensional there are few exception of course so let's talk about methane now now i have taken this 
of course, if all the corners are white, it is hydrogen, but I have used different colors so that you can understand it in a better way. So, we will assume that this is methane, the central one is carbon and this four corners are hydrogen. Now, you can see that in this, there are two green. Now, this green, if I just tick on this black surface, I repeat, if green I stick on this black surface, you can see that both the green lies on this black surface. So, this is on the plane. This blue is coming towards you. Therefore, this is above the plane. And the red one is behind the black surface or it is towards me and therefore, this is behind the plane. Now, we cannot draw this three dimensional structure on a two dimensional surface. Therefore, or we make certain assumptions which are as follows. Remember, the assumptions are if you draw a straight line, it means it is on the plane. So, you can see that I have used green bonds to hydrogen which indicates it is on the plane. If I draw this triangle or solid line, I repeat, if I draw this triangle, actually they are called as wedges. If I draw a triangle wedge or a solid line, it means it is above the plane. So, can you see this hydrogen? This hydrogen is connected to a solid line. So, this is above the plane. This hydrogen is connected by a dotted wedge. It means a dotted wedge or simple dotted line. It indicates that it is below the plane. So, this is how a three dimensional molecule is represented on a two dimensional surface in organic chemistry. We will talk about this type of structure more when we talk about isomerism. Thank you for the day. I am giving you some examples to solve as homework. So, do solve it. If you have any doubt, please ask in the comment box. See you soon.